Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring it on to bite-sized pieces. Today, that's some pretty interesting stuff and thought-provoking things. First up, this is the reason why you probably shouldn't get into too many meme coins. First up, Vitalik Buterin moves 1.3 billion worth of Ether, but the question is asked is where is it going? And we're going to take a look at uh, another problem that uh, could be for the meme coin generation, which is uh, that same gentleman, Vitalik Buterin, donates a billion dollars worth of Shiba Inu when he really wasn't supposed to, even though it was for a great cause. And what you can expect to find with Dogecoin and as far as whales controlling a whole lot of things. We'll take a look at those stories on top of the fact that Brave is now integrating with Unstoppable Domains. So you can now use your dot crypto and actually have it rendered and functioning fully. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, the IRS is cracking down for all you US citizens because uh, to pay your taxes, you got four days. All right, so let's take a look at that. But first, let's take a look at what is going on into the market. So today, it is, uh, gosh, what is it? May 13th, about uh, about high noon or so. And this is the market cap that we've got. We've got two point, almost 2.2 trillion. Thanks to Elon Musk and his nice little tweets. Hey, again, we talked about this at nauseum, how I think this is actually a gift. And he's just uh, allowing people to buy back in. So thanks, uh, we appreciate it. Daily salmon is bearish. Bitcoin price, wow, what a drop, 48,300. And I went a shopping spree last night. We did a live stream on it, and uh, I was actually rage buying things because I was so ticked off. And uh, But in all honesty, uh, fundamentally, nothing's really changed. So let's take a look at uh, coin prices and just see just see how bad we got whipped last night. So Bitcoin, 48.3. Man, Ethereum, was it like 4,300? Now it's at 36. Binance coin, 59. Cardano. I wanted, want you to notice something today. Everything's in the red, except for Cardano. And there is a theory going around, and this is just rumor, unspeculative rumor, but the tweet did state that what uh, Tesla is going to do is they're going to stop accepting Bitcoin for payments, which no one was using Bitcoin for payments to the cars anyhow, and, and, and until they find a more viable solution uh, as far as like um, non-renewable resources. And uh, my theory, quite honestly, is that, and this is, we did a live stream today, and we, we took a look at Cardano, XRP, Polkadot as the potential new ones that could be used. But in all honesty, I think that what they're going to do here is just, uh, you know, use their solar panels because Tesla also makes uh, these solar panels that are pretty high quality, I, I suppose. And they're getting into the renewable fuel credit market. This was just dropped yesterday. So that's how I see it. But the rumor is just a rumor, and I don't think it's substantiated whatsoever, is that Cardano could be uh, one of those cryptos that they're going to be using as far as payments, which does make a lot of sense, even though there's no smart contracts. But uh, who knows what it could be? But it is odd that that's the only one that has actually gone up. And also it's odd that before that announcement uh, that Tesla made, that Bitcoin also took a big dump, which means to me is that someone's got loose lips and someone told somebody who told somebody who was a whale, and then off you go. That could just be what it is. But uh, let me tell you, in the crypto community, everybody knows everybody. And that's really what's going on. So uh, today's just a big uh, S show. <laughs> Everything's in the red. I'm not going to delve into it. That's what's going on. But I want to take a look at these meme coins and uh, how dangerous they really are. Because you can get a, a ton of them. Like Shibu, Shiba Inu, like my friend George, he's got, he had a ton of those and he's, he got out like right before the big uh, crash because of Vitalik. I asked him, why did he do it? He's like, oh, I found another S coin that was uh, looked more attractive. No theory of why he just did it and then he got lucky. And that's really what it comes down to. But there's a lot of people who aren't getting lucky, which comes down to this. So Vitalik Buterin moves 1.3 billion worth of ether. What's going on? So Vitalik Buterin has moved a ton of ether, almost all of his holdings from his main public address to a separate wallet until approximately six hours ago. And this was written on yesterday at 7 p.m. almost. So that was maybe yesterday around high noon, about 24 hours ago. The wallet held more than 320,000 ether. Wow. At 1.18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Ethereum investor transferred 325,000 ether to a separate contract address created only a day ago. Now, Buterin did donate more than a billion dollars worth of different crypto to India COVID Relief Fund and appears to be the largest transfer of his ETH holdings to date. But that's totally separate. That's totally separate because he was donated to that. Uh, he was given that 
by, I guess, the founder or co-founder, which leads us into this story of why he did it. I personally think it's a great thing because India is getting crushed right now with COVID-19. They are running out of oxygen. They can't even help the people who are drowning uh, because of all the secretions that are building up, uh, the ronchi and, and the wheezing and then everything else that, that uh, accumulates in, their, in these, these pulmonary canals and, and the alveoli just getting crushed in, in the lungs because of the uh, COVID-19 uh, infection. So what he's doing, great, but there's a caveat. So Ethereum's Vitalik Buterin uh, took control of a stack of Shiba, Shiba Inu, a Dogecoin ERC-20 token, okay. Donated more than a billion dollars worth of the currency to India's crypto, crypto COVID relief fund. That's great. Hopefully money can be that thing. Uh, money doesn't, I mean, money does make the world go round. Let's just be honest. But to get that much money and get into the supplies that you actually need and the things that you can actually use, I think it's going to be a big waste at some point, but it's a good thing. And uh, we should all donate. We should all do what we can when we can. And uh, that's just the, the God's honest truth. But on one part, uh, Buren also sold Akita and Dojalon, <laughs> other similar currencies causing a slide in market prices. So yeah, some people lost some money. Some people got crushed, but it did go to help out people. That's a great thing. Here's the caveat. So he donated 10% of a Shiba Inu stack to India's crypto relief fund. So I wanted to make sure I was reading this correctly. Because when I took a look and I'm like, hold on, wait. Was it a billion of the Shiba Inu tokens or was it a billion dollars worth? And it was a billion dollars worth of tokens, not a billion tokens, which is nothing in the Shiba Inu. I think it's like almost, they have like, I want to say almost a trillion, maybe 560 billion, something like, somewhere around there. So he took a billion dollars worth. So if that's 10% of his total, that means he's got 9 billion more just sitting around. 9 billion worth, however many tokens that is. That, that, Vitalik is a huge whale. And this is the concerning part. These Dogecoin ERC-20 tokens were given to him to burn them under the assumption he wouldn't touch them or sell them. However, against all popular belief, Bearden decided to put these funds to good use. So there you go. So you got on one side going, you know what, this could help a lot of people. Other people, this could crash the market. He's like, you know what, we'll crash it for a bit and then we'll deal with the ramifications later. I'm not here to debate that. That is a, a lofty debate about what should be. I personally think it's a great thing he did. People are going to get crushed financially. Sorry for you. It could go round and round. I don't want to go into it. But it just makes me think, and this is the thing that I, I worry about with these meme coins, and people are always like, you don't understand. That's the new economy. Memes and entertainment, and this is what's going to drive everything in cryptocurrency. And I'm like, no. No, I just can't believe that. I just can't, especially when you have all these whales that are really pulling the strings of the puppets. You can disagree with me all you want to, and you can do whatever you want to. This is not financial advice, financial opinion. It's up to you. This is another thing. A mysterious Dogecoin whale owns 22 billion of the meme-inspired crypto. And this is a warning by Elon Musk, because he said back in February, this is the biggest problem with Dogecoin. A single digital wallet currently owns 36 billion Dogecoin or 28% of the crypto's entire supply. Do you want someone who has a fourth of everything uh, in Dogecoin to be the puppet master? Whoever that is, who, whoever that is, I don't know. But if you feel comfortable with that, then you should invest in a Dogecoin. Have fun at it. And just so you know, this was written on May 8th. So don't think too much has changed. And in honesty, I think with the dip, and everything that went down, I bet that wallet probably has a heck of a lot more. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, this to me is a dangerous game uh, people are playing and they can do whatever they want. There's, there's lots of money to be made. There's lots of bag holders on the sidelines. So that's it for that piece. Let me know what you think. Move on to our next. So first of all, I want to say thank you to my sponsor, who is Unstoppable Domains. We don't do many sponsored posts, but I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, Zaji reached out to me, Zaji Reyes, and said, hey, we're doing this, this great thing, and it's, it's really big news. And it is big news, it's huge. So finally, you can have your .crypto uh, website, which is an NFT, uh, can actually be rendered on Brave Browser. And I think this is fantastic. The browsers that actually you know, make it are the ones that <laughs> are actually going to be actually 
uh, improving. So just so you know, but watch this little graphic right here. This is cool. So you can put in whatever your dot crypto and it just renders it perfectly. You can do it on desktop. You can do it on mobile, which is Android and also uh, Apple. And I think it's pretty awesome that this is actually able to be done. And uh, I'm gonna, real quick, we're gonna talk to uh, my mad, where'd he go here? Brad Cam, Brad Cam. And he's the founder and he's gonna tell us exactly how long this actually took and how you can actually create your own website. So let's jump into the interview. So let me introduce you to, to Brad Cam. He is the, one of the founders of Unstoppable Domains. And he's gonna just talk about quickly about, you know, first of all, how the heck, how long did that take to get this actually done? And how you can actually build your websites? Because for, for a lot of us, we're in the old school system of, you know, uh, going to like a GoDaddy, buying a, uh, a domain, and then using like uh, some type of uh, website builder. So Brad, thanks for coming on. Help us figure this whole thing out. Of course, thanks for having me. So yeah, so I guess, you know, first of all, big picture. So uh, Brave integrated uh, and added support for dot crypto domains. Uh, and what this means is that you can just type them in. You can just type in brad.crypto and check out my website. There's no kind of weird extension, no other trick. Uh, it's kind of a big deal for the internet in general. Over the past 30 years, there's really been uh, just this one set uh, of DNS system. And, and that's been it. There really hasn't been any alternatives. Blockchain DNS as an idea has been out there since probably 2013. Right. Uh, but this is kind of the first time that it's broken through and actually gotten support in browsers because, hey, if it's on the blockchain, who cares if you can't find it, uh, if you can't actually use it. And so right. browsers have this kind of superpower in this world because they actually need to decide to support uh, a new domain name system. It's not like traditional DNS where it just default works everywhere and everyone's relying on the same thing. So they made this conscious decision to be a leader in this space, uh, and yeah, it took quite a while. It's a it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty big integration from a from a technical perspective, but they uh, they have been leaders in integrating uh, blockchains into into the browser for years. They 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 kind of pioneered this, um, and this is just one more uh, one more step on their path. Isn't that it? Isn't it crazy? Like like we always showed this this like graphic, and I think I'll I'll pull it up in a bit and I'll splice it in, but it, it takes a look at like, like the top browsers over time. And you can see like, you know, like a Netscape navigator and how it just gets overrun by something else and AOL. And then all of a sudden you, you see like, like Google Chrome come in and then you see like all these different ones. I mean, Chrome is still, you know, one of the bigger ones, but Brave, I think the ones that make it are the ones that innovate and they push things forward. So I can see a lot of big things happening on with Brave. So kudos to you guys for making this actually happen. How long did this take to get this done? Ooh, I think we've been talking about it for, for almost a year, but I think the actual work is, was probably a little bit about three or four months. Uh, candidly, this is mostly work on, on their team's end. You know, yeah. we built the tools that we built, we've been building over the course of years. And so um, it's really, you know, their, their heavy lift, their, uh, their hard work, their glory. Yeah, well, they're doing good things. That's the, Brave is prime. It's the only one I use unless I want to do things like on, on my bank because sometimes there's like an issue with that. But besides that, everything that you guys see at home when I'm talking about about the news stories, it's always on Brave browser. And that's just how because it just it makes sense to me. Okay, so we got that. But talk to us about like because like me, I'm old school. I use the old type of old type of tools. I have a many a dot crypto, and I think I've got one dot zil uh, uh, NFT. Uh, domain, but how do we build on it? How do we do that? How do we make a, an actual website? So it's not like traditional websites. What you're doing is you're storing on decentralized storage networks like IPFS. And right. what this gets you is this gets you a website that only you can put up or take down because you control the domain name. You point the domain name to whatever you want. That content is stored by like hundreds of different people all over all over the world. And that's what prevents your, your website from just being just being turned off. So completely new security model for the internet. The way it works right now is I've got my .com domain. I stored it inside of GoDaddy. GoDaddy can turn me off or they can get hacked and tricked into giving my domain to someone else, which happened in November, 2020. It was this big giant, uh, big giant scandal. Uh, so all of those problems go away. Now we did introduce a new problem, which is, is that now we need new website tools. So like, for example, you, know, you mentioned WordPress and things like that. That stuff doesn't default work. Uh, for decentralized websites. So we've built some some very simple templates. These are for like non-technical users, you know, ah. profile pages, and blog, and we just built this uh, NFT art gallery. So that's what I actually have up at brad.crypto right now. So if you own some, if you have an NFT art collection, it's a couple of clicks. And what it does is it, it's like a verified, verified collection. So it'll go and it'll check in your wallet. 
It'll see what, what uh, digital items you own, and then it will put that up as a website uh, on your domain. So you know when you're checking out brad.crypto that I am both the owner of the domain and the owner of the art that you're seeing. So it's kind of like this, you have this like 100% confidence uh, that the owner of the website is also the owner of the stuff you're seeing. So that, oh, that's the okay. cool kind of new new yeah. feature you get out of um, out of decentralized web is you get these kind of, uh, you get this confidence uh, about what you're seeing. Um, but just kind of to step back, like these are very simple templates, very early days. You as a developer can build whatever you want. People are building all kinds of complicated apps, um, but that might require development skills. If you're not a developer, you're going to need to use some sort of a, some sort of a, a template, like a decentralized web version of Wix or uh, or WordPress or whatever. Now, I think the WordPresses of the world are also going to make it easier over time for for you to launch these types of websites. But the first thing that needs to happen is is that crypto users start start using them. Then there's enough demand. Then these bigger bigger apps kind of uh, come in and help make it easier on us. But we're like 1996 internet days. That's what that's what I that's what I tell people. It's like we're we're kind of rewinding the clock back to the basics, but you're in control and now we can build on top of that. Yeah, can you imagine that? I mean, I see a business, I see I see nothing but opportunity abound, right? I mean, if you are a developer and you wanna build like templates, you could be the new Wix, you could be the new Optimized Press and you could do all these things and just get on, on the ground floor and then scale from there. That I, I think that would only make sense. And then I, I think another great thing is that like every year I'm paying for all my domains every single year off of GoDaddy, I think I have another one. But, is it, but in here, that doesn't exist. It's a, it's a one-time thing. And then you own that NFT, you own that domain, and then bleh, off you go. So there is no more, no more fees per se that I'm aware of. And it's also, it's also just about, it's about ownership. You know? So in the traditional domain world, you're renting. And yeah. you have to worry, like, what is, the, what is the registry gonna do in the future? Could they change prices on me? Could they change some other kind of rules? You know, could they get hacked? Could they decide that I don't deserve to own this domain anymore? Like there was a big dispute over France.com. It had been owned by this, this one guy for like 20 something years. Yeah. And then France decided they wanted it. And they had this, they created this, there was this big long court fight or whatever. And they wound up taking it from him, even yeah. though like they don't have any specific rights to France.com as a, you know, that's, that would be considered a generic term in terms of, you know, in, in the internet world. Uh, and yet that happened. So here, Hmm. Like buy the domain, that domain is stored inside of your wallet. Someone's going to need to go, you know, wrestle your phone out of your hand um, yeah. because that's where your private key is in order to go and get that domain. That's the new security model. And you don't need to worry about what Unstoppable Domains is doing. There's no way for us to change prices on you in the future. It's yours. If we were to go out of business, doesn't matter. You, you still have the domain in your wallet. Um, you're still relying on the blockchain. So it's just a completely different relationship. It's, it's much more like, you know, it's, it's almost you know like like us selling you like a I don't know like a like a like a football or something like you don't need to care about your relationship with the creator of the football after you have bought it like it, it's yours now you can do whatever you want with it it's more like that yeah that's crazy I mean I, well I mean back to the story I can see like France.gov but France.com it seems like well that's a that's a dot com but whatever whatever you want to do okay that's all you and then uh, two things first of all um, the different N NFTs this is all I, I can't remember. Are these all ERC twenty uh, yeah. NFTs? ERC seventy ones. Yeah. So it's very seventy ones. That's right. Yeah. It's a similar format to. It's the same format as you know, most of the collectibles that you would see out there. Most of the digital art, um, you know, the crypto kitties and all that sort of stuff. That's all. Uh, that's all using the ERC seven twenty one standard or something close to it. Right. And the reason why everyone's using those standards is is because it makes it really easy for apps to support domains. So without us having to do any kind of integrations, just by launching on day one, you can store the domains inside a Coinbase wallet and they show up very clean and very easily. And you can, you can, uh, you, you can do things with them. You can send them, et cetera. They show up inside of OpenSea and you can trade them uh, freely. All that stuff just kind of happens without an integration um, because you use those standards. And that's the reason why everyone's kind of, kind of piling into them. Yeah, I gotcha. And then, and then lastly, Brad, I hate to, to ask you, but could you show us exactly where those templates are? So like people at home are like, okay, I can get ready. I can get going. And they just kind of see it. And I, I think I, I've already integrated the uh, share screen option on your end. So if you could, that'd be great. Yeah. Cause people, so, cause people like people always ask me like, well, that was awesome. Where do you get it? And you always got to show people, I think. Yeah, totally. Totally. So I think there's, um, there's probably two things to show here. 
Uh, and one of those is, here we go. So the first thing is that if you're inside the app, you can go right here to my websites when you're logged in and you can see a whole bunch of different types. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and there's one other really cool one that I think is worth checking out. Uh, and that is this, uh, this NFT art collection one. And this is at uh, NFT dash collection. This is sort of a special, uh, special campaign. Um, and this is the one I was mentioning where with just a couple of clicks, uh, you can go and you can check out, you can check out a website. Nice. Brad crypto. Mm -hmm. It's my, uh, my little, uh, my little NFT stash here. Yeah. I've got, I, I've got Dan teaches dot crypto. I'll probably have to, to move it over. Nice. <laughs> and I should do it. Okay. So that's where we find it. That's where we got it at. Okay. Makes sense. That is it. Uh, I, I think Brad, thanks for, for showing us the, the nitty gritty and uh, how much time it actually took and how much it's, I think, going to propel us forward as time moves on. So for you watching at home, if you're looking to get your first .crypto or .zill uh, domain, the link is the, is the first link in the description below. So go over there, head on out. And as a reminder, in the 90s, that's what everybody used to do. They would buy up every .com they get their grubby little hands on. And uh, that's kind of what I did. I own quite a bit. So uh, uh, I leave it up to you to figure out which one is for you. Not financial advice, financial opinion. Brad, uh, thanks for coming on. Any last words of wisdom for anybody out there looking to uh, do these things? I would just start playing around. You know, like that's, that's kind of the beauty of being, you know, if you're, if, if you're watching this, you're, you're, an early crypto, you're an early crypto adopter. So the best, best way to learn how this stuff works is to play with it. Yeah, makes sense to me. Just get out there and do it. All right, everybody, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that great stuff. And uh, Brad, thanks again. So I hope that made a lot of sense. Uh, Brad, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Again, thanks to Unstoppable Domains for this sponsored post. We really appreciate it. Let's move on to our last piece, which is IRS is going to seize crypto assets. So if you're not a U.S. resident, this has nothing to do with you. But I've always said that, first of all, we're going to see a dip in prices because taxes are coming up on May 17th. It is May 13th. we got four days. People, uh, if you think people pay taxes early, they don't. They wait till the last minute. So just expect a little bit more of a sell-off. This is what's going on. Robert Waring, Deputy Associate Chief Counsel of the IRS, told a virtual conference Wednesday that crypto can be seized in the event of a failure to pay taxes, just like other properties. So people were asking me, like, well, who cares? If they're going to take it from me, they're going to take it from me. But here's the thing. If you don't pay your taxes, you don't file your taxes, it's not that you didn't pay, it's also the fact that um, you're gonna have fees, uh, you're gonna have penalties. So if you owe like a thousand, they could just put on another 3,000 or 4,000. So if you were going to, if, if, if the fee was a thousand dollars, that's only a quarter of a, of a Ethereum. Well, not now, not that it went down. So let's say you have to pay 4,000, well now you just lost your whole Ethereum. So do your taxes, makes it a lot easier, and then off you go. So there's two choices for you, okay? Don't pay taxes, and that's fine. You can do whatever you want to. I'm not your dad. But uh, if you want to pay taxes, first of all, nobody wants to pay taxes. If you want to fill out your tax forms, do what I do. Use CryptoTrader.tax. Very simple. I made a video. Walk you through the whole thing. It's 15 minutes long. Link in the description. You get 20% off. Very simple. From the time I signed up, time I got it done, it takes me 30 minutes. Very simple. And if you don't want to actually pay taxes and you like your gains, take a look at iTrust Capital. Did a video about that, 23 minutes long. I go over what is a, a traditional IRA, a SEP IRA, a Roth IRA. So if you have a 401k, a 403b, a TSP, or any type of thing you want to roll over, they can also do that. Also, in Q4, you can, um, well, no, sorry, Q3 uh, coming up, all the different gains that you have from your crypto. Obviously, you don't pay uh, tax on that. And you can stake your Cardano and your Polkadot and your Ethereum, and those rewards are also not taxed. You get to get a twofer, so good for you. Anyhow, that's it for today. So look, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. I appreciate it. If you like this type of video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Uh, we do videos every single day. Uh, a lot of things are time sensitive, and that's it for this one. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next.